Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And we have another great article from Inside Towers. I will leave it in the description down below so you guys can check it out in its entirety. Lots and lots of great information in the article. Highly in encourage you guys to check it out. So let's get right into the, to the title of the article. T-Mobile build out eyes 1.9 band next that is the pcs spectrum now i i did listen in on and watch the entire ubs conference last friday that neville spoke at and he did say that his next build out target for 5g is the pcs portion of the total amount of spectrum they own so t-mobile owns and some people still don't really realize this. They own a lot of spectrum, man. They own, they just about own the amount of spectrum of two companies. And they're one company. To kind of put some pr perspective on that. And that doesn't even fully put perspective on it as to how much spectrum they really own. So he did, he did reference at the conference that between AWS and PCS, he owns 110 megahertz nationwide to let that sink in for example in my market he almost owns as much aws and pcs as he does 2.5 to just let that sink in that's an insane amount of spectrum so what they're going to do and what he's really talking about here on this additional build out the 1.9 i spoke i've spoken with two engineers on this as well as to how this is going to uh, manifest over the next several months so he's not necessarily just yet using his pcs his band too what he's going to be using to to make this happen over the next several months is going to be using sprints g block their pcs and that'll come in the form of n25 so as you look into your phone as you check it, for those of you who are the tech enthusiasts that check the service mode, it will be N25. So what enabled T-Mobile to be able to do this? One, the Sprint CDMA shutdown was very important. Because now, previously, when Sprint used this PCS spectrum, because of CDMA, they had to aggregate two 5 megahertz channels. Sounds silly, but because of PCS, they had to do that. They couldn't run them contiguously now since sprint, uh, sprint cdma is officially shut down t-mobile can run those channels contiguously now so in, in in my market for example they can now go 10 by 10 contiguously on n25 whereas when sprint was running that pcs on lte they had to do five by five aggregated with five by five now they can do 10 by 10 and, and get it over with. Some markets, they're going to be able to do 15 by 15. In some, which is this, is this is more of the rare case, they're going to be able to do 20 by 20. But that's that's that 40 megahertz is, is, is very rare. Where Sprint did own it, but it was very rare. And not to get too far off topic, there there's still some spectrum swaps that T-Mobile can do to give them even more contiguous if at and and Verizon are, of course, okay with that. But, you know, that's a topic for another video. That, you know, the carriers have done that in the past where they do spectrum swaps on the blocks to get them more contiguously aligned in parts of the, of the United States. So that is the next project where they're going to repurpose that PCS block from Sprint and move that over to NR, to 5G. Now, some of you may have very well already seen that PCS spectrum from Sprint used on LTE. And in fact, it may have uh, been giving you a boost of speed on LTE. But now, that is going to be repurposed for 5G. So what has to happen next for that to really speed up? They're going to have to shut off the Sprint LTE network for that to fully speed up. And that's coming, but it starts at the end of the month. It's probably actually already starting now, but at the end of the month, it's going to ramp up. And then over the next several weeks, 
they're going to decommission the Sprint network. They've been very quick, very efficient on that. So I don't see that being a problem, and I don't see that taking that long. It took them a couple of months to get the CDMA uh, shutdown done, and now I fully expect that to be about the same time frame to shut off this LTE network. And once they trim that down, they can repurpose the N25, NR, and that'll make it a better experience in parts of the country where T-Mobile doesn't own as much N41, 2.5. In some counties, they don't own any at all. So they can start already competing in the, some of those rural parts using this N25 coupled and aggregated with the N71. They can very well do that as they wait for this auction 108 to kick off. So let me know what you think about this. Um, in some cases, this makes this now makes T-Mobile an immediate threat in some of these rural parts because they don't have to wait for N41. They can go in, already start deploying sites, and they go in with, with N25 and N71 right off, the, right, at the, uh, right off the bat. And then, you know, N41 is going to be the icing on the cake. They'll have to go back to those sites and upgrade them, but that won't be a problem. They, they have that already included in the cost structure because the radios can support so much bandwidth. They put that radio up, the N41 radio, and now they go sell home internet, fixed wireless access, and they go recruit new customers in these parts. So make sure you guys stay uh, locked into the channel. Like, share, subscribe. Follow my social media outlets for more updates and interactions. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. See you in the next one. Peace.